Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, the parable of the faithful servant, a version of which is found in each of the first three Gospels. However, each Gospel tells this parable quite differently. Let's take a look. Who thinkest thou as a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath appointed over his family to give them meat in season? Matthew twenty four forty five, And the Lord saith, Who thinkest thou as the faithful and wise steward whom his Lord setteth over his family to give them their measure of wheat in due season? Luke twelve forty two, A steward, according to the dictionary at Merriam-Webster, is one employed in a large household or estate to manage domestic concerns, such as the supervision of servants, collection of rents, and keeping of accounts. The second definition of butler is essentially the same thing. They have no ownership rights over the household or the property, but they do have and exercise authority over the other servants. Here, Jesus is asking people to determine what makes a good, wise steward. Even as a man who, going into a far country, left his home, and gave authority to his servants over every work, and commanded the porter to watch. Mark 13.34 Undoubtedly a rich man, or he wouldn't have servants. Also, a porter is what people usually think of when they hear the word butler, a person who admits people arriving at the door, and or helps to assist others in entering. This porter has been given an order to keep watch in case his employer returns. Remember, there are no doorbells at this period in history. Let your loins be girt, and lamps burning in your hands, and you yourselves, like to men who wait for their Lord, when he shall return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open to him immediately. Luke twelve thirty five to 36 Specifically, the Lord of the manor or castle is going to a wedding. It doesn't say whose wedding it is, but I'm inclined to think that it's his own wedding, if only because Jesus compares himself to a bridegroom. Like the porter here, we should always be ready to let Jesus into our lives. Blessed is that servant whom, when his Lord shall come, he shall find so doing. Amen, I say to you, he shall place him over all his goods. Matthew twenty four forty six to 47 Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Amen, I say to you, that he will gird himself and make them sit down to meet, and passing will minister unto them. Luke 12, 37 Blessed is that servant whom when his Lord shall come he shall find so doing, verily I say to you, he will set him over all that he possesseth. Luke twelve forty three to 44 While it is unusual for a Lord to serve his own servant his dinner, he might be willing to if his servant has done something that really made him happy. Jesus makes it clear that this is the order of things. First we serve God, then if we do our duty, God will also serve us, giving us food and drink, sit down to meat, helpful guidance, minister unto them, and even greater authority, set him over all that he possesseth. Of course, we can't expect to be masters ourselves, because none of us exist necessarily, and God does. However, we can at least share in the good things that God enjoys, and benefit from them. At the end of the day, that's what we really want. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. Luke twelve thirty eight. The later that the Lord arrives and still finds someone waiting up for him, the more pleased he'll be that they followed his instructions, even though it was difficult for them. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord is long in coming, and shall begin to strike his fellow servants, and shall eat and drink with drunkards. Matthew twenty four forty eight to 49 But if that servant shall say in his heart, My Lord is long a-coming, and shall begin to strike the men-servants and maid-servants, and to eat and to drink and be drunk. Luke twelve forty five. However, there are people who use the Lord's delay in returning as an excuse to misbehave, assault the other servants, steal from the Lord's wine-cellar, etc. About these people, Jesus says, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day that he hopeth not, and in an hour that he knoweth not, and shall separate him, and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew twenty four fifty to 51 The Lord of that servant will come in the day that he hopeth not, and at the hour that he knoweth not, and shall separate him, and shall appoint him his portion with unbelievers. Luke twelve forty six. 
The steward had no real idea when his lord would come back, but he got himself into trouble anyway, and when his lord comes back and sees what he's been up to, he takes him away from the other servants and gives him the same fate as unbelievers and hypocrites, a deeply unpleasant one. And that servant who knew the will of his lord, and prepared not himself, and did not according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Luke 12.47 People who know what they're supposed to do, and refuse to do it, suffer severely for their sins. But he that knew not, and did things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. And unto whomsoever much is given, of him much shall be required. And to whom they have committed much, of him they will demand the more. Luke 12.48 However, people who don't know what they're supposed to do and don't do it suffer less. This is what we call culpability. You may be guilty of a certain action that's sinful, but if you had no way of knowing it was wrong, you're less culpable, and therefore less deserving of punishment. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the Lord of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming on a sudden he find you sleeping, and what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Mark thirteen thirty-five to 37 But this know ye, that if the householder did know at what hour the thief would come, he would surely watch, and would not suffer his house to be broken open. Be you then also ready, for at what hour you think not, the Son of Man will come. Luke twelve thirty nine to 40 Not that we should literally never sleep, but that we shouldn't sleep on our spiritual needs. If we need forgiveness, we should seek forgiveness from God through the sacraments. If we need to draw closer to God, we should pray, fast, or help other people. There are many good ways to take care of our spiritual well-being, rather than forgetting about it and letting our relationship with God wither. In short, always watch out for things that could damage your relationship with God or harm your ability to obey Him, because just doing whatever you feel like doing all the time weakens your ability to do that, and it opens you up to evil actions, and there are many unpleasant consequences. We're free to make our own choices, but we're not our own masters. Every one of us needs to answer to God for our choices one day. We should always ask ourselves if we think we're ready to give that answer, and if not, what we need to do to make that happen. Next, the Ten Virgins. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.